we're going to go over some examples of finding all subsets of a given set. Doing this requires that you really understand what a subset is and you really have to understand what an element is. Now let me quickly scroll through and see all eight examples that we're going over today so you can see what we are in for. And of course, I encourage you to stop the video at any point and give some of these a go yourself, especially once we get the first one done. All right, here's our first set. We want to write all subsets of this set. Now, just for convenience, I'm going to call this set A so that I can tell you, remember, a subset of A is just a set whose elements are all contained in A. So for a quick example, before we really get into this, the set containing one is a subset of A because all of this set's elements are in A, but the set containing one and 10 is not a subset of A. And I'll leave more relevant links to other lessons I've done on these subjects in the description. All right, let's really get into this now. When you're trying to list all subsets of a set, it's a good idea to follow a pattern so that you don't get lost. The pattern I like to follow is listing all subsets with zero elements, then all subsets with one element, then all of them with two elements, and so on. Let's start with zero elements. There's only one subset with zero elements, which is this one, of course. That's the empty set. Remember that the empty set is a subset of every set. So when you're listing subsets, start with the empty set. Make sure you don't forget it. The empty set is a subset because it doesn't contain an element, not in A, so it's got to be a subset by definition. Then I'll move on to all subsets that contain only one element, and these are pretty straightforward. The set containing one, the set containing two, and so on. All right, so we've got all of our zero and our one element subsets. That's five subsets so far. Now you may remember this nice property that a set with n elements will have two to the n subsets. That's a good way to make sure that we don't miss any. Since this set has one, two, three, four elements, it should have two to the four or 16 subsets, which means we still have a ways to go. Let's move on to the subsets that have two elements. That will be the set containing one and two, the set containing one and three, the set containing one and four, and so on. Hopefully you can see that I'm trying to do this in a pretty ordered manner. So I start off by getting all the two element subsets that have one in them. Next, I'll move to the two element subsets that have two in them, and so on. All right, there's all of our two element subsets, and I've also started to color code them now by the number of elements they have. Now let's list all of these subsets that have three elements. There's only a few of these. We could have one, two, and three, or we could have one, three, and four. That would be another subset. Or we could have two, three, and four, or we could have two, four, and one. That's the other one that I almost forgot. That's all of our subsets that have three elements. And finally, the last subset you don't want to forget, I'll have to write it on the next line so it will fit, is the original set itself, the set containing one, two, three, and four. Every set is by definition a subset of itself because this set doesn't have any elements that are not in A. So by definition, it's a subset. And these are all 16 subsets of A. The trick to not screwing this up, I think, is doing it in an orderly fashion and making sure to check your work at each step. If you count all of these subsets, you'll see there are 16 of them, so that makes me pretty confident in my answer. Now, this first problem is pretty basic, focusing on what it takes to list all of the subsets. The other examples will have a bit more of a focus on making sure that we're correctly identifying the elements of the set. In this set, for example, second uh, example, we'll call this B, the three elements, there are three elements, are one, 
two and the empty set. The empty set is itself an element of the set B. So let's go ahead and start listing the subsets. There should be eight subsets of this one because there are three elements. Now again, where should I start my list of subsets? Let's start it with the empty set, the only subset that has zero elements. These are, of course, two ways of writing the empty set. Either one is fine, uh, but this is how I'll write the empty set for our list. So that's the first subset. Now let's move on to the subsets that have one element. That would be the set containing one, the set containing two, and then the set containing the empty set the set containing the empty set, because the empty set is an element of B. So the set containing the empty set is a subset of B. It's really important that you remember the empty set contains nothing, but the empty set isn't nothing. It's a set that contains nothing. It's like an empty box, and an empty box is a lot different from no box at all. Once you get a good understanding of the empty set being an element, I think the rest of this is pretty straightforward. Now we're listing all these subsets that have two elements. So we could have the set with one and two, the set with one and the empty set, or the set with two and the empty set. And then finally, the only subset with three elements is the original set itself. That's the set containing one, two, and the empty set. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight subsets in our list. So that's a good sign. We're done. All right, these next few examples will be a bit quicker. Let's call this one C. Again, we got to make sure we understand what the elements of our sets are before we list all the subsets. This set has one element. The element that it contains is the set that contains the empty set. So there are only gonna be two subsets of this set. The first subset will be the empty set, which again is a subset of every set. And then the other subset is just gonna be the set itself. That is the set that contains the set that contains the real numbers. And that's the only other subset. I know it probably looks a little weird, but you've got to remember sets can be elements too. The one element of this set is the set that contains the real numbers. And so these are the only two subsets. All right, next example. It's really windy out there. This is the empty set. We'll go ahead and call it D, although we don't really need to for this discussion. What is the subsets or what are the subsets of the empty set? There's only one. It is the empty set itself. The empty set is a subset of everything, including the empty set. Surely, there's no other subset of the empty set, because as soon as you put any element in a set, well, it's not empty anymore, so it certainly can't be a subset of the empty set. Man, I'm saying set so much. Let's move on to the next example, the set containing the empty set. Perhaps it'll be helpful for me to point out why this set, which we'll call E, is not itself a subset of the empty set. That's because the set E contains an element. It contains the empty set. And the empty set is not in the empty set because nothing is in the empty set. I know it's pretty weird. You got to listen to that really slowly to understand it. But here we go. Subsets of the set containing the empty set. Again, we'll start off with the empty set itself, which is a subset of everything. Now, a uh, reminder, this set has one element. It's one element is the empty set. So the only other subset that it has is the set itself, which is the set containing the empty set. This is a subset of E because everything in this is in the set E. And that's it. Let's move on to the next one. We'll call this set F, and F has three elements. Its three elements are the set of real numbers, that's one element, the set of rational numbers, that's the second element, and the set of natural numbers, the third element. So we'll have eight subsets. 
The first subset will be the empty set, which contains nothing. Then all of these subsets that have only one element. So that's the set containing the reals, the set containing the rationals, and the set containing the naturals. And then we can move on to all of the two element subsets. There are our two element subsets. The only other subset is the original set itself. That's the set containing the reals, the rationals, and the naturals. All right, second to last example, let's call this next set G. How many elements does this set have? Again, that's always a good thing to answer first before you start listing off subsets. This one looks pretty similar to the previous one, but G only has two elements. It has the real numbers, that's one element, and its other element is this set. This set that happens to contain the rationals and the naturals, but it's only got two elements, this one and that one. I'll leave a link in the description to a lesson that I've made really focusing on how to identify the elements of a set. But since this one only has two elements, it should have four subsets. The first one we'll list is the empty set. Then we'll have all of these subsets that contain only one element. So that's the set containing the reals, and then the set containing the other element of this set G, which is this weird set uh, that contains the rationals and the naturals. This is the other one element subset. I'll point out as well, the rationals and the naturals, it's important that you understand this, are not elements of G. The rationals and the naturals are not elements of G. They're elements of an element of G. This element here contains the rationals and the naturals, but the rationals and the naturals are themselves not elements of the set G. Now the last subset, the, uh, uh, the last subset here, the two element subset, is going to be the original set itself. Not even going to write it again. We can just hit this with a little bit of copy and paste. There's our last subset. You can see we've got one, two, three, four subsets, just as expected. Let's move on to the last example. This one's a little bit messy. We'll go ahead and call this guy A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. We begin by asking, how many elements does this set have? Well, it's got this element, the set containing 0 and 1. It's got this element, the set containing 0 and 1, as well as the set containing 2. And it's got this third element, the set containing 0. Remember, 0 is just a number like any other. So this is not the empty set. It's the set containing 0. 0 is a thing. It's 0. It's a number. All right. So how many subsets does H have? Since it has three elements, it has two to the power of three subsets. So that's eight subsets. We'll begin with the empty set. That's the subset with zero elements. And then I'll move on to all of the one element subsets. There's all the one element subsets. We've got a subset that has that element, a subset that has that element, and a subset that has that element. Now we'll move on to the two element subsets. And there we go, those are all the two element subsets. Just for an example, look at this one. It contains this element, which you see there, and it contains this element. It contains two elements of H, it's a subset of H. Now the last subset would be the original subset itself, which I certainly don't want to write again because it took a little while to write, so we'll just do a little copy and paste again. There is our final subset. Altogether, we have eight subsets of H. So hopefully those were some helpful examples of writing all the subsets of a given set. Now if you take any of these lists of subsets and put them in their own big set, those are called power sets. A power set is a set of all the subsets. So those are pretty cool. And again, I'll leave lots of relevant links in the description to some related topics that you may also find helpful. Hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions.